Hi, today we're going to be looking into Unit 5.1. So go ahead and open your books to page 48. And the first thing we're going to see is three pictures, but don't worry about them until we work on exercise two. Mainly, let's go ahead and focus on the vocabulary. On this part, we're going to be looking into what's transport. So it says, work in pairs and answer the questions. How many types of transport can you think of in two minutes? Make a list. I have come up with a couple of them for you right here. And some of the transportations that I came up with was a bus, a taxi, an airplane, a train, a motorcycle, a bicycle, skates, skateboard, moped, scooter, a ship, a boat, a sailboat, and the raft. Now you might ask yourself, what's a raft? A raft is exactly what you're looking up right here. It's something that's not well built. You make it out of scraps and make it floatable. And most people that use this, they tend to use it during emergencies. Okay, so now that you have an idea of what kind of vocabulary we're going to be looking at, and hopefully you came up with some yourself. Let's go ahead and look at the second question. What do you think is the best way to travel and why? Well, depending on the situation that you're in or the trip that you're going to make, is the transportation that's going to be the best for you. If you're going to be making a long trip across the country, you might want to take an airplane if you need to get there quickly. But if you want to have an experience out on the ocean, then you could go ahead and probably take a cruise ship and so on. There's other options such as train and maybe road trips. You can go ahead and take a motorhome, maybe a bus, or just drive yourself to your destination. So the question could be answered depending on the situation. It depends on you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second part of the exercise before we move on um, to the photo bank. We're going to skip that. And it says, work in pairs, look at the photos A through C and discuss the questions. What types of transport do you think appear in the films above? So one thing we have to keep in mind is that the pictures are being related to what? Films, right? And two, the second question, where do you think the people are going? We have to think where our their destination is. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look. So right here, we see that they're out in the ocean, right? And they're on a raft. It doesn't look so safe. And it looks like if the first man has fallen. So definitely, that is a raft. The second type of transportation they have is a kayak. And if you don't know how they're spelled, I have them right here. So the first one, they're using a raft. The second one, they're using a kayak. And the third one, they're not using anything at all except for their legs. So they're walking, which is another method of transportation. One of them is the Kantiki. I think this is what the movie's called. The second one is Into the Wild. And the third one is Rabbit Proof Fence. So there's three different types of scenarios. We have the ocean. This looks like a river. And then we have a desert. So keep that in mind. While we work on the rest of the second uh, part of the exercise, moving on to number three, it says, working groups, student A read the text on this page, student B read the text on page 161, student C read the text on page 163, as you read, make notes about your text. We have to answer three questions. 
one, who made the journey, two, why did they want to go, and three, where did they go? We have to answer these three questions for each part of the lecture. The first lecture is con ticking. So let's go ahead and try to answer the best we can. And the reading says like this. Con ticking. In the middle of the 20th century, the Norwegian explorer and writer Thor Heyerdahl developed the theory. He believed that people from South America traveled to Polynesia about 1,500 years ago and settled there. At the time, very few others believed this theory. They thought the journey was too difficult without modern technology. While others were discussing the theory, Heyerdahl decided to test it. Using only materials and technology available to the people of the time, Herodot and his team of five sailors and a parrot built a wooden raft. On the 28th of April, 1947, they left from Peru and crossed the Pacific. While they were sailing, huge waves crashed into the raft and whales and sharks came close. 101 days and 4,300 miles later, they arrived in Polynesia. At that time, no one knew this type of journey was possible, but perhaps the most amazing thing about the journey was that Thor Herndal didn't know how to swim. Herndal later wrote a book about the journey, and in 2012, a Norwegian film called Khan Tiki came out based on the trip. So. What an amazing story, right? A group of people just deciding to prove a theory and going across an ocean uh, and not knowing how to swim. That is interesting. And as you can see, we have the definition of what's a raft right here at the bottom left. It says a flat boat usually made of wood. So you could go ahead and think of different scenarios where you would use a raft. I think it would be under emergency situations such as escaping an island or maybe uh, escaping a country where you're being oppressed like Cuba and Venezuela. So those are definitely situations you would not like to be. Alright, so moving on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the questions. What, what, what do we have to answer? First, who made the journey? So the journey was made by Thor Herndal and the five sailors, right? The explorer. It says it right here. Norwegian explorers and Thor Herndal. And then the second question would be, why did they want to go? It was to prove it was possible to travel from South America to Polynesia using only basic tools. And then number three, where did they go? They crossed the Pacific Ocean. They went across the Pacific Ocean. So that is crazy, right? That is something that you would really love to travel and explore to do such a thing. Let's go ahead and move on to page 161. Um, 161, we're going to do the second reading. If you can go ahead and turn to that page and follow along, then we'll go ahead and answer the three questions once again. And this reading is Into the Wild. When Chris McCandless graduated from Emory University, USA, he knew he wanted more from life than a normal career. He gave away his savings, $24,000 to charity, abandoned his car, burned the money in his wallet, and gave himself a new name, Alexander Supertramp. He rejected the modern world and decided to experience life alone in the wild. With hardly any equipment or technology, McCandless went into the Alaskan wilderness. While he was traveling, he met several people who helped him, giving him rides and food. One man even offered to adopt him as a grandson, but McCandless decided to keep going into the wild. Eventually, he ended up in an abandoned bus, hunting and picking plants for food. 
While he was living wild, he wrote a diary. It described his day-to-day -day life and difficulties and pleasures he had from living in nature. McCandless stayed in the bus for four months and then his diary stopped. Eventually, his body was found by a hunter. Following a book describing his life, a film came out based on his adventures. Wilderness, a wild area where no one lives. Can you think of a wilderness here where we live in Merida, Yucatan? You can consider El Monte or the Black Hills a wilderness. That is definitely where somebody does not live. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to our page 48. So we can go ahead and answer the three questions that we have for that lecture. And it says like this, who made the journey for the second reading? Well, it was a young man called Chris McCandless. And two, why did they want to go? Well, he wanted to experience life alone in the wilderness. And three, why did they go? Where did they go, I'm sorry? He went to the Alaskan wilderness. Let's go ahead and turn to page 163 for the third reading. On this part of the reading, we're going to look into uh, a man, or not a man, a story about the desert, and it goes rabbit-proof fence. What do you think it's going to be about rabbit-proof fence? Let's see. It is Australia in 1931. Three Aboriginal girls, Molly, 14, her sister Daisy, 8, and their cousin Gracie, 10, were taken from their home by government officials because of their race. They were sent to live in a camp far from home. Life at that camp was terrible and they hated it. One night, when it was raining, the girls decided to escape. They knew that the rain would hide their footprints in the mud. So they began the long journey home. In the desert, they had no food and nowhere to sleep. They didn't have a map either, but when, but while they were walking, they saw the rabbit-proof fence. One of the longest fence in the world. It was there to stop rabbits from entering farmland. The girls recognized the fence and walked next to it for 1,200 miles. After nine weeks, they got home. Many years later, Molly's daughter, Doris Pilkington Garimura, wrote a book about the journey and in 2002, the story was made into a film, Rabbit Proof Fence. Wow, what a, what a story. I was not expecting this, this kind of outcome. Uh, thank God they were home after so many years of I don't know, incarceration, I think, but definitely something, not a nice experience, right? Definitely none of you would like to experience that. All right, so let's go ahead and answer those three questions that we have for that story. The first one is, who made the journey? And it was three Aboriginal girls, Molly, Daisy, and Gracie. Two, why did they want to go? And it was to get home. And three, where did they go? They went 1,200 miles across the Australian desert. Wow, can you imagine crossing the desert on barefoot with hardly any clothing to protect you from the sun, from the sun and, the, and the cold weather at night? Definitely these girls had a rough journey. All right. So now that we have uh, that out of the way, let's go ahead and look into this speak out short, uh, speak out tip that they give you right here in this. And I want you to go ahead and keep in mind that every time you see these tips to go ahead and make uh, notes of it. Also the rules that you have right here on page 48, 49 I mean. Go ahead and 
highlight those memorize those just because they're going to come out on the exam and it's definitely there to help you so the speak out tip says this make short notes don't write full sentences choose only important information try to use your own words the sun was shining where they began their journey that friday morning so, for example, here they're using uh, from that sentence, they're only writing down sunny when they left. Find a sentence in one of the texts, make a note of the main idea in three or four words. So, basically, it's just uh, this tip is for you to go ahead and make notes of the reading, especially since you have to be switching pages, uh, in order for you to go ahead and make. Well, we'll just answer the questions, but also if you guys remember about the five W's that I taught you the who, what, when, where, and why, if you go ahead and keep in mind those five questions every time you do a reading, more than likely you'll be answering the questions that are made for, uh, for that reading uh, on any particular types of reading, literally. You can go ahead and take a, an exam as long as you go ahead and answer those five questions more than likely you'll be answering most of the questions that are going to be there um, and it's going to be like that for everything all right let's go ahead and go to the to the question parts on exercise five and it says which parts of the journey sounded enjoyable terrible frightening on this part you're just going to ask your opinion you could go ahead and probably agree with me that the third one uh, was definitely terrifying from beginning to middle. The only thing that was pretty cool that they escaped at the end. Uh, for the picture B, which was Into the Wild, the most terrifying thing for me would be uh, dying of starvation or maybe just getting sick and not having medicine to at least soothe the pain. And then for the first one, which is the ocean, wow, they didn't have anything except for basic tools, right? And of just a not so safe raft. I would definitely say that the ocean is a scary place to be, especially during stormy nights. And just because I've, I've experienced some, some dangerous situations out in the ocean and definitely something you would not like to, uh, a place you would like to be under those circumstances. Um, let's go ahead and continue uh, with the second question. Why do you think the stories were made into films? Well, because they are true stories with an important message to pass on and also to just celebrate. I think people make, make movies out of real life stories or situations also to bring courage to people uh, to bring maybe just a moment of laughter depending on the on the author right on the director what kind of outcome he wanted to have I believe in these cases was just to commemorate remember the bravery their, their story was interesting as well so it's to entertain so there's many different reasons why they made those films right but we could just go ahead and guess some of them and then number three can you think of any other journeys that have been made into films definitely there's definitely hundreds and hundreds of, of movies made out there for uh, real life journeys uh, especially right now going on with this coronavirus I believe that there's movies going out I think there's one uh, out in Netflix called infected or virus something like that or viral and definitely it's something that we're experiencing so yes there's lots of journeys uh, films made already out there and I hope everyone is staying home everyone's staying safe and washing their hands uh, as often um, go ahead and disinfect your doorknobs keys everything that you guys constantly use and um, try to go out as least as possible outdoors i think in about two weeks we're going to be entering phase three of the epidemic so just for prevention so i think it's pretty cool all right let's go ahead and answer number three can you think of any of the journeys i've made i already we already went ahead and did that one 
Now, we're going to be getting into the grammar part, and today's grammar, we're going to be looking into the past simple and past continuous. And before we get into that, let's go ahead and move on to page 136, which is your language bank. So we can go ahead and have a better understanding of this part of the grammar. So whenever you guys are ready, let's go ahead and begin. And it says like this, past simple and past continuous. Like on every other part of the grammar for, from the book, you have your three different types of examples. The first one is always in a positive uh, way. The second one is in a negative way. And then your third one is in a question form. Let's go ahead and see the first positive one. In the past simple is, I watched the film yesterday. Watched, being your verb, is in the past simple form. This right here would be the past simple. Watching, was watching, would make it into a past continuous, right? Was being the past, watching being your continuous, just in the ing form. Um, and then you have, he didn't play there, which means did not, right? The did is the past, and the not would be making it the negative form. And then you have the, he wasn't, was not playing here. You have was being the past, and then not making it the negative, and then playing, making it continuous, all right? And then did you talk to John, did making it your past simple, talk is your infinitive form right here, and then to John, which makes it, did you talk to John? And then right here in the past continuous, were you talking to John? And then you have were making it past, talking making it continuous, and then so on and so on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use the past simple to talk about completed actions. So what does that mean? It means something that has already happened. For example, I ate a salad last night. Well, I ate a bowl of cereal this morning. Right? And it is, even though it happened today, it's still past simple because it already happened. And it's probably not going to happen again. Not until tomorrow. <laughs> not at least tomorrow morning, right? And then we're going to use the past continuous to talk about actions in progress at a particular time. Now, this part right here could be a bit confusing. So before we go ahead and uh, get into it, let's go ahead and take a look on this part right here. And it says, it is common to use the past simple and the past continuous together to tell stories. Huh. So they're using it at the same time. All right, let's see why. See, the past continuous describes an action that starts first, but it is interrupted by a second action. Use the past simple for the second, which is usually a short action, All right? So that's pretty simple. Now that we understand that, what they're basically saying is that, hey, well, once you go ahead and start your past, whatever action is in between, right here, it can be either finished or it happened into a certain time or it's still happening. It all depends on your sentence and what kind of information you're trying to give. But in this case, they're giving us part of the story that we were reading. What were you doing when the bus crashed? Sorry, not when we were reading, but vocabulary from the reading, right? It says, what were you doing when the bus crashed? Were being the past, doing being continuous, and then crashed being past again, right? But if you see what's going on, they're using past continuous. And then they go, they go, they go ahead and use the past simple at the end. So past continuous, past simple, past continuous, past simple. I was sleeping when the thief entered the house. It is common to use when or while to link the two actions. 
use while before the continuous action. So you see right here, he was doing something. Oops, sorry about that. He was doing something, right? He was sleeping when the thief entered. This when right here, what they're saying is that you could go ahead and use while as well. So, while I was sleeping, the, th the thief entered. That's another way that you could go ahead and use while. Alright. Use when before the continuous action or the short action. In this case, when we were talking, the bus appeared. We were talking when the bus appeared. So like the example I used before, you can go ahead and either put it at the beginning of the sentence or you can go ahead and put it at the middle of the sentence. It all depends on your type of style or the, the focus that you would like to give to your sentence. Right? Do not use while before the short action. I was sleeping while it started to rain. In this case, what they're saying is that it always has to go in the beginning. While I was sleeping, just like the, the example I gave earlier, it started to rain. While I was sleeping, the thief entered the house. Never while uh, I was sleeping while the thief entered the house. All right, so now that we go, we have that understanding. Let's go ahead and move on to the same to the next part of the book, which is the next page on 5.1. Again, if you guys are having uh, issues understanding the past and the past continues, it's like I said. Remember, Spanish is your friend. It's the same thing: pasado simple, pasado continuo. All you have to do is just go ahead and apply it into English. Alright? But it's the same grammar rules. Alright, and the first exercise is A, and it says complete the story with the correct form of the verbs in brackets. Use the past simple or the past continuous. So we have Alvin Strait, a 73 year old. So now they give us live, live. Right? So we have to decide whether to use past simple or past continuous. In this case, 73 year old lived quietly on his farm in Iowa. Well, since I do not have a keyboard to type right here, we can go ahead and say. Mm, Was living. There you go. Okay, so that works. So you can go ahead and say that Alvin Strait, the 73 year old, was living quietly on his farm in Iowa, USA, when he heard the news that his brother Lyle was seriously ill. After 10 years with no contact between the brothers, Alvin, blank, which we have the word decided to visit Lyle. In this case, the words in the bracket is correct already. So we can go ahead and just leave it as, as it is decided. Right? So, uh, Alvin couldn't drive, so he blank by, right? In this case, we want to use the past simple or past continuous. That's right. We're going to go ahead and use the past simple. And it is bought. He bought a lawnmower, 
which moves at five miles per hour and past continuous again, past simple. All right, begin. The 250 mile journey. While he was traveling or traveled. While he traveled, he met many people, or while he was traveling, he met many people. Well, it was something that he was doing often, right? It was something that was continuous. So in this case, was traveling. Including a priest and a teenage girl who was running away from her family, he helped them all simply by talking about life. Some of them also help, right? In this case, help was it was helping him. Some of them also was helping him, or some of them also helped in the past symbol. And as you have guessed, it is the past simple. So we have it right there as helped. And then we have number seven. Since he blank drive the lawnmower, it broke down. It was something that was happening while it happened. So it was a past continuous. In this case, we're going to say was driving. While, while two mechanics blank fix it, he met a friendly couple. Well, while two mechanics were fixing it, something that was happening at the moment, right? We're telling a story. So it was going on while something else was happening. So we're fixing, right? So while two mechanics were fixing, he met a friendly couple and stayed with them because that would be the short action so it cannot be ongoing it has to be past simple in this case it would be stayed and then we also have the journey took him six weeks and blank the story blank end so right here they're not giving us something and what's missing is an auxiliary so what are your auxiliaries do you guys remember well do did right were so those are some of auxiliaries. Which one goes there? The journey took him six weeks and do the story end happily? And did the story end happily? Or and were the story end happily? Well, it sounds best with did. So in this case, let's go ahead and put did and and okay. all right so now that we have that out of the way uh, all right I was trying to get the answers for you right here so you can all see them but let's go ahead and move on on this part see it makes sentences with the prompts in the correct form of the verbs in the box use the past simple or past continuous this is pretty simple you don't have to cure yourself it's just making sentences uh, 
with the bracket with the words and finishing already half the sentence written for you. So the first one says he slashed tennis when he hurt his leg. All right. So we know that when he hurt his leg, what did what was the rule? Do you guys remember? We just read it not too long ago. Right? Use when, when we were talking, the bus appeared. We were talking when the bus appeared. Do not use while before the short action. So we know that when is being used after a short action, which means that a past continuous has to go in the beginning. In this case, you would have to say he was playing tennis. He was playing tennis. When he hurt his leg. Two. Sarah slash the job because he was boring. Alright. So we have was boring. So this is a past continuous? No. But we do have Sarah. If you had something negative right here, would that make it a positive sentence? A negative sentence? Huh, the question already answered itself, right? So it's already definitely a negative sentence because it was boring. So that right there is giving you an idea or an example of what to write. So you already know that she probably did not like the job, right? Because of the rest of the context. So Sarah did not like the job because it was boring. So in this case you would say... Okay, so this is a different keyboard. I'm sorry, I need an apostrophe there too. Alright, didn't Alright, so Sarah didn't like the job because it was boring. Three, while well, they well, they what? They met lots of their tourists? Other tourists? What were they doing while well, they met other tourists? Well, were they passing? Were they knowing? Were they liking? Were they playing? Were they dancing, swimming, traveling, or having? Alright, so definitely while well, they were traveling. Right? Would sound the most correct. So let's go ahead and write that down. There you go. While they were traveling, they met lots of other tourists. <clears throat> Four. How blank you blank my name? That is a question. That one's pretty easy. So how did you know my name? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do those four with you. I'm going to go ahead and let you finish the, the rest of the 
of the exercise so you could go ahead and get some practice but at least you know exactly how it works he was playing tennis when he hurt his leg remember all you have to do is just make sure whether to use this right here this information is going to go ahead and help you with the exercise the best as possible and I promise you that it is not difficult after you figure out its meaning or its method. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can definitely send uh, send me an email. Most of you already have my phone number. You guys already have my, my email address. Or you could just leave a comment at the video and I'll go ahead and reply it as soon as possible. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to page 48, 49, sorry. So we can go ahead and well, we're about to finish, so finish this part of the page, and then the rest of you can go ahead and work on the rest of it. Okay, so now that we understand past simple and the past continuous, when to use them, when not to use them, uh, how to use them when they're together, uh, it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and focus on some of the vocabulary that they're using right here. Remember that whenever you have something in bold, which means in black lettering, right, it is more than likely vocabulary that will come out on the exams or any quiz. So it is important that you know their meanings, that you understand how to use them. So if you're going to use them in a past simple, in a past continuous, if you're going to use them in an infinitive, if you're going to use it in whatever form you're going to use it, learn it. And let's go ahead and take a look. So we have three sentences, and three each each sentence has what two words, two phrases um, that are highlighted. And as you can see, we already have the past continuous, and then you have the past simple. Past continuous, past simple. Past continuous, past simple. So. While they were sailing, huge waves crashed into the raft. 2. Or B. While he was living wild, he wrote a diary. C. When it was raining, the girls decided to escape. Alright, so what tenses are the verbs in bold? Well, like I said earlier, they are in past continuous, past simple, past continuous, past simple, past continuous, past simple. 2. Which action started first in each sentence? Sell or crash? Hmm, that was interesting. Alright. So, let's see, sorry about that. Uh, which action started first in each sentence? Sell or crash? Well, it says right here sell and then crashed. Mm. Well, he was living wild, he wrote a diary. When it was raining, the girls decided to escape. Three. Which action took a longer period of time? Four. Which actions are background information and which are main events? There's something that I want you to pay attention right here, all right? And in order for you guys to understand this part, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, 2A and sorry about that. I'm getting confused right here, okay. So we're at number two. And then it says, 2A, this one says selling, B, living, and C, rain. That would be the order on which action started first in each sentence, all right? All they're saying is which started first. 
if it was selling, living, or raining. So while they were selling, while he was living, and when it was raining. And then number three, which action took a longer period of time? Well, out of all three journeys, one of them took the longest. Which one would it be? Well, it took the people who were selling the longest. And then we have B, Ryan, or Chris, I believe is his name. He lived the longest. And then three was the rain. That was the order of which one took longer. I didn't think it rained for a whole month, right? But the first guy, the first people which crossed the ocean, I think he believed it took them days, so it didn't rain for days. And then we have number four. This is right here where I do not want do not want you to get confused between two informations. What what is a background information and what is a main event? So I went ahead and made notes right here for you. And I want you to go ahead and pay attention to the definitions. So the definitions for background events is this. Details that identify and describe the significance and historical value of a selected topic and provides references to literature that supports the topic. It is a vital element as it provides relevant factual details that are related to a specific topic. So in this case, what does that mean? <clears throat> what, is, what does it mean background information and main events? Well, let's find out. The main events of a story is the climax where, the every, where everything is at its most interesting part of the story. Let's go, let's go ahead and use, this, use the exercise as an example. See it's right here. While he was living wild, he wrote a diary. Which part would be the climax? And which part was the background information? Well, was selling... Were, uh, was selling, was living, and was raining would definitely be the background information. The main event would be crashed, wrote, and decided. Because he decided to escape, he wrote a diary and crashed. That's that's the whole story that that uh, that was their climax. Um, I don't know if you guys found this any helpful, this video. But if you guys have any questions regarding to the material that you guys are using, uh, remember that you have also the website on the back part of your book, so you can get the audio scripts or even the audios for this part of the book um, it's right here if you would like to do this exercise it's right there on the back page of your book you do not have to do this you can go ahead and practice with your parents or maybe with your siblings but it's literally just having to make sentences uh, between back and forth uh, also for the speaking right here you don't have to do it there's no way for you to speak to me right now and then uh, this right here, we're going to finish on the 7A. Alright, so now that you guys have the answer for 6A, let's go ahead and move on to 7A. And it says it, and it says like this. Make sentences with the prompts. Alright, so that's pretty easy. They're giving you the first one already, so that means you have seven sentences left to do on your own. Says so I run start to snow so hmm I was running when it started to snow so I went home all right so you don't have to make the sentences true for you you can go ahead and make something up 
just make sure that whatever you're writing it has common sense. I'll go ahead and do the second one with you. And it says, I wait for a bus, blank, meet my boss. So, alright, we can go ahead and think of a scenario. First one says, I, which means you are involved. Wait for a bus, meaning you're in a second situation, you have to wait for a bus. And then you have an important inf you have an important event. You're gonna meet your boss. You could already come up with so many ideas on how to complete this sentence. First of all, do you want to make it positive or do you want to make it negative? If you want to make it positive, you can go ahead and make your waiting for the bus as pleasant as possible with your, with your ideas. And then your outcome is going to be, well, splendid. But if you want to make a negative, you could already come up with so many ideas as well. Alright, since you could go ahead and make it either or, let's go ahead and find out. Well, first of all, also make sure that you're, follow, you're paying attention. Was running when it started. So was running would be my past continuous. Started would be my past simple. Right? Went would be my past simple. So what would be the formula? Past continuous, past simple, past simple. Something like that. Alright. So for number two, we can go ahead and say I was waiting for a bus to meet my boss uh, first time. Oops, sorry about that. That's not a good example. I was waiting for a bus to meet my my boss. When it started to rain. So I called an Uber. Alright, so I definitely made the sentence into a negative form. Why? Well, not because I used the, a negative, like a not, do not. Just simply because it started to rain. And that right there was already a sucky situation. Alright, so now that you have a better idea, you can also go ahead and play around with it. Make the sentence yours. You can go ahead and make it funny, you can go ahead and make it um, depressing, whatever it is your style. What it is that you would like to read. Go ahead and write it down, laugh at it, joke about it, make it your own. And that way you can go ahead and make this uh, exercise as fun as possible. I'm not going to go ahead and do this part of the exercise with you just so you have something to do at home. Definitely by next video we can go ahead and see the answers uh, to see what was the outcome of it. Other than that, we're going to go ahead and finish the class for today. Uh, this part of the exercise right here, 7A is homework, uh, page... 137, uh, the second part of the exercise, that is homework as well. Uh, this part right here, if you want to listen to it, you can. I would strongly uh, recommend that you use this for exercise. You can see the uh, example they're giving you. I was sleeping in my bed when I heard a strange noise, so I called the police. They're using sleep right here. They're using the past simple and the present I um, mean, past continuous in the past simple. Go ahead and do that as well if you would like. Uh, if not, just keep those phrases in mind. They are pretty good so you could make uh, conversation sentences and just have fun with them. 
All right. Well, I hope all of you are staying safe. All of you are having a good time at home with your family. Go ahead and keep practicing your English. Watch videos. Uh, listen to music. Watch movies. Practice speaking with a friend. Uh, through a, I don't know, video chat, phone call, video games, whatever it is. But just use your English skills as much as possible. With that, I hope you have a great day and stay safe. Bye-bye.